done and yet this is another episode of uh, the patch notes again in English um, it's going to be a uh, patch 11.5 so the newest patch for League of Legends of course I don't think we'll see many changes that will impact the, me uh, the game in a um, drastic way but uh, we will definitely see uh, some changes to the game Azir W is getting nerfed he's sent soldier damage decreased by 10 uh, basically just by 10 flat out 10 damage less so every time you stab people with the soldiers they will do 10 less damage uh is it pretty popular in pro play and high elo some people like to insect with him some people actually play well in team fights and don't go in but just stab people uh, I think the champion needed nerfs, uh, it's too easy to get mid priority with it, uh, it's very safe and it's just strong, strong scaling, strong early game, strong everything, so I feel like uh, Azir definitely deserves nerfs and uh, it's nice that, it, it is nice that Riot realized it. I, I don't know if this is enough, 10 damage, but you have to keep in mind that it's 10 damage per one auto he does with the soldiers. So for example, if you auto one wave 10 times, it's 100 damage. Um, in theory, it could matter, right? Or in team fights, maybe, I mean. Yeah, Gragas, Q cost now is flat 80, um, doesn't increase per level. Uh, well, if you were playing Gragas top lane before, I feel like that's kind of irrelevant because some Gragas top lanes don't even level up Q. You just go EW uh, and you don't even level up Q. I feel like for jungle Gragas, uh, this is not gonna matter that much as well because you still have enough mana to farm in the jungle. So this nerf... Yeah, I don't think it really hits Gragas, honestly. I think the Gragas will not care about this nerf that much. Jax, uh, damage growth increased by about 1. So that just means if you get level 10, you will have 10 more AD than you used to have uh, in the previous patch. Um, I mean, it is lovely. Uh, it is a lovely change for Jax players. Kinda... I, I don't know if that will make him meta. Maybe since people play stuff like Fiora and Camille, that will make uh, him a better counter. But still like a very tiny, tiny, tiny buff. Um, Karma. Q cooldown decreased. Inner Flame cooldown decreased to 8 seconds. Scales down to 6. Right now it was 9. Would scale down to 7. So 1 second less on Q cooldown overall at each level. Um... I mean, yeah, well, Karma not being used very often lately. I think with the buffs to the Shard of Ice, I, I, I don't remember the name, but basically to um, the blue item that freezes people. Um, that item is very broken right now. And Karma can build that item. So if Karma goes for Everfrost and she plays solo lane i think karma could be relevant solo lane because she always gets pushed right, right? then the question is if you want a karma in your team or you prefer something useful like azir maybe or you know whatever you play viego katarina but yeah i mean a sweet buff for karma players right everyone else doesn't care kogmao this is actually a big 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 buff bonus damage from w increased by one percent of target maximum health but this is huge because Kog'Maw W will do 6%, now it does 7%. It's actually a huge, huge buff. Um, if tanks come back to the meta, and for a fact I know Sejuani is getting buffed, I think Kog'Maw absolutely like shreds tanks. So if Kog'Maw becomes a viable option for AD carry, I think all the tanks will get absolutely shredded. It's actually a very big... I think this is the most relevant buff from all the other buffs that we saw so far. I think this is actually like a big change. It's, it's a huge damage buff. Mastery, Voodoo style, base damage increased by 2 per level. Scales up to 10 more at level uh, 13, I guess, because you max Voodoo style after Q. Um, so honestly, I don't really know who plays Mastery. And I feel like Mastery is very popular in low elo because people don't pick any crowd control. And then when he just jumps in and autos you, you are going to cry because you can't really see him. So he'll just die. And then people complain about how broken is Mastery. And I kind of want to play Mastery with Duskblade because I think that build looks fun when you are like one-shotting someone and then going invisible. But yeah, I just don't think that Mastery is very re relevant for high elo, so I will not see a lot of stronger he's. Pike, passive, Gift of the Drowned once. Grey Half Storage uh, now scales 10% of the damage taken plus 25% lethality, increased to 35% of damage taken plus 50% of lethality when two or more enemies are nearby. So that just rewards um, when Pike has... 
Instead of levels, that rewards when Pike has items, and Pike, Pike has normally a lot of items because he gets a lot of gold, and it also rewards aggressive play because when there's a lot of opponents, you get more health. Um, yeah, I mean, Pike is a fun to watch champion. I think if it's in the meta, it's super, super fun to watch. Uh, I really hate having Pike in my team in solo queue, though. I really prefer anything like Nautilus or Alistar or Leona or Rel or any other broken support. Uh, I don't like Pike that much, but I mean, it is fun to watch. And Mickey really likes Pike, and I really like Mickey. So, if Mickey wants to play Pike, I'm fine. Kiana, W Terra Shape, a bonus damage increased uh, by 24 at max level. I don't actually know, and also scales better with AP. So I don't know why she, they gave her a better AP scaling. No, Kiana goes AP because she doesn't have any other AP scalings than the W. So that doesn't make any sense. And then the supreme display of talent. Uh, just as I do every week at LAC, right? I display, I, I also do a supreme display of talent every time I, I pick Nidali or Olaf. Um, the damage is increased by 30 uh, rank 2 and by 60 rank 3. So, uh, yeah, that just means Kiana is still irrelevant and she will not be played often unless you give up midwaves, roam to sidelines and get free kills and then you're broken anyway. So this is kind of irrelevant, I feel like. I, I don't know why, why the W buff. Like, no one even puts a point in W. So, I mean, you put one, right? But don't max it. Ramus base health growth decreased. So there is this one guy uh, that I play against. It's Ramus one trick pony. He plays in high elo. Every game he goes uh, two levels behind, but he just ganks bot lane, and my bot lane always runs it down. And then Ramus gets strong. So I'm very happy that he will have 15 less health per level. That makes me quite happy because you know that means at level 10 he will have less than 150 health, and 150 health is actually quite a lot, right? So that's a, like a rabbi crystal. So I think that nerve is actually pretty impactful. Because you actually need Ramos. Uh, you need I Because every Ramos also rushes Tormail. And Tormail doesn't give you health. So now if you do Tormail and you don't build health, you'll get punished. Real. Base damage, base armor, uh, three less. Uh, crash down, two more cooldown. Mount up, two more cooldown. Rally still giga OP. I can say you that much. Samira. Damage growth increased by 0 0.7 and Q flare damage ratio increased by 10% at max rank. So 2.5% per level starting from level 2 of the ability. Uh, yeah, okay, so Tormail has health, but no one actually rushes Tormail. They buy, buy Bra Bramble's Vest and Bramble's Vest doesn't have health. And then after Bramble's Vest, you go for Camp Tank. So Bramble Vest, yeah, whatever, Ramos in there. Samira, um, a little bit more damage. Um, I do think Samira displays 200 uh, years of balance even better than Aphelios from time to time. Uh, it's just Katarina on steroids with a dash and, you know, uh, Yasuo Windwall. But uh, she cannot dash on allies anymore. So she definitely is a little bit of, 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 of a risky choice when you pick her. Um, I do think her damage will, will be very, very high though. Because I think they buffed her damage last part patch already, so her damage is very high, but she is um, maybe easy to kill. Sejuani buffs. Um, we don't talk about them. We don't talk about that. <laughs> okay, so Sejuani is getting buffed slightly. Uh, she will do 0 .0, 0 0.75 more damage with her second W hit. So Sejuani can be viable if she can clear jungle, and this maybe will make her clear jungle a little bit better, so maybe we'll see some Sejuani in the future. Maybe I'll even test Sejuani myself. Seraphine, passive, stage presence. Uh, Seraphine notes no longer decaying damage to non-minions. Notes from allies now only deal 25% damage of Seraphine's no damage to all targets, including minions. No damage decreased, uh, or actually no, no damage is increased. And our anchor uh, cooldown increased by 20. I personally really hate Seraphine. I think the Shem should get deleted. I really hate the fact that she's Sona 2-0, but she's, you know, of course, Seraphine is a 2020 champion. And Sona is a 2015 or 14. So, of course, Sona is just out of date, you know. Seraphine is just a better Sona. But she, her ult is so much more broken. Like, she has exactly the same abilities, but she's just twice as, as broken. So, I, I really hate this champion. And I hate Moonstone. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy she's getting nerfed a little bit. Shaco, the base damage from boxes decreased by 5. Single target base damage decreased by 10. Bop. But uh, the box now deals increased damage to monsters. That means your clear will actually not suffer. It's just that super shaker is worse. Uh, Trandle, chomp, cooldown decreased by 0 0.5. Still useless. He can't farm jungle. 
Twitch, uh, damage ratio per stack of AP decreased by 0.5 and spray and pray bonus damage increased by 5, duration increased by 1. So AD Twitch getting some love, AP Twitch slightly weaker. Udyr, health growth decreased by 7 and Phoenix Tense aura, aura total damage decreased by about 5 per level starting from level, um, no actually 10 already, 10 are level, level 1. Um, so Udyr is maybe gonna be slightly more balanced, right now he's super annoying because his items are cheap and it's very hard to kill him but I think this I mean he, he, he Uder is either OP or useless right so I feel like this will make the Uder slightly more balanced and you know whatever Viego uh, a lot of bug fixes everything else is the same Viego no longer dodges two red shots that are in the air when he starts to possess po possession animation that is huge I think the fact that Viego becomes in unkillable when he possesses someone like when he is possessing someone it was super op i think the fact that he cannot dive as easily now with this is, is huge and then a lot of back pieces uh, items muramana shock will now deal uh basic attack deals 1.5 maximum mana as bonus damage melee abilities deal 3.5 um so i guess it's just like slightly better for melees also, all abilities also deal 6% total AD as bonus damage against champions. So, yeah, I mean, AD champions are still viable, uh, definitely. Stride Breaker. Dash increased by 100. Dash speed slightly increased, but the slow is decreased by 20%. And the damage is also decreased by 25%. Uh, I think Stride Breaker is still very strong. And the fact that Dash is going to be even bigger now will make a lot of uh, champions to, to, to be very obnoxious uh, to play against, like Nar, for example, that can just kind of dash to you and ult you. Um, I think this item is better than Gord Drinker, honestly, right now. I don't know why they're buffing this, right? It's just whatever. Ginzo Rageblade, rough! Convert every 1% critical strike chance into two bonus physical damage on hit with a a maximum of 1% critical uh, strike chance. Wrap on hit damage conversion is not affected by critical strike uh, damage modifiers. I think that just nerfs Senna, but I don't know how. I can't understand. Uh, Serpent's Funk. I uh, basically, yeah. I mean, she, he's just he's just a little bit a little bit weaker. Um, Serpent's Funk Shield Reaver updated. Dealing damage to an enemy champion reduces the any shields the game by 50% for minus and 25% for range champions. When you damage an Champion who is unaffected by the shield river reduce all the shields on them by 50% for mid champion and 25% for range champions. So um, yeah, I don't know. Weird. Um, I guess this item would for sure be much better against shields now because it actually reduces the shields that also will apply after. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Marvel Malmortius 300 less gold, huge buffs, and Black Cleaver also 200 less gold, 100 more health. Um, no longer deals bonus physical damage, but now gives him man speed. I think Black Cleaver is actually going to be very strong and Mao Malmortius probably is not going to be used often. But I think Black Cleaver is going to be Giga OP for Darius. I think Darius maybe next patch will be like the slayer of the noobs. Because if you are a noob and you don't know how to play against Darius and he gets Black Cleaver and he also gets Strike Breaker, you will not run away from him. So um, yeah, I think uh, the noob slayer Darius is going to smash low elo very very soon well that was it we also have a very cute skin for mazhar and timo and kogma of course kogma getting buffed because you know he's getting a new skin so he has to get buffed i'm surprised mazhar is not getting buffed thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if uh, i missed any changes or maybe you think there is a combo that i didn't mention but it's gonna be very op next patch with any item or any build uh, you can mention it in the comments and uh well i will see you next time bye bye